Good morning, everyone. Today is September 1st. Happy September 1st. And September 1st marks the beginning of the new year, especially for children. Millions and millions, tens of millions of children throughout this country started going to school either last week, this week, or next week. Now, in this week's Torah portion, there's a commandment that says you should not erect a monument, a stone, to worship, but rather worship the one true God. And the question is, who would erect a stone and worship and pray to a stone? And so there's another interpretation to the word stone. The word Evan is made up, comprised of three letters, Aleph, Bet, and Nun. Aleph stands for either Abba or Ima. Av or Aim, they both begin with the letter Aleph. The letter Bet stands for Ben, son, or Bat, or daughter. And the letter Nun stands for Neched, which means grandchild. You know, when someone passes away, it's customary in Judaism to put a stone on top of the monument, on top of the stone. What we're saying is there is the monument to remember the person, but on top of that is the stone, which represents the continuity, the generations, parent, child, grandchild, that a person's real purpose in life is to create a legacy that will live on, that will transcend their lives, to transmit their values, their principles, and for Jews, transmit Judaism to future generations. And therefore, the prohibition of worshiping a stone or a monument could mean don't have a fixed life. Don't become paralyzed or stuck in one position. Always make sure that you are growing, not just physically, but spiritually, emotionally, and communicating your teachings, your values, your morals, your ethics, your Jewish heritage to future generations. And that's the prohibition. Do not have a stagnant or a stationary form of life of connection to God. When you look at children, the beautiful thing about children is that they're always growing. And as adults, we have to be inspired by children. And that's what the month of Elul is and the high holidays each and every year. Why do we go through these exercises every year? And it's at the same time that children are starting school all over again. Because we're reminding ourselves that we're all like children. And a new year has to bring new growth and new development, and new knowledge, and new inspiration, and revealing new potential, just like a child reveals within themselves. You know, when millions of kids go to school, parents take them to the bus stop or to the school, and take a picture of the first day of school, and when the child goes off to school, there's two tears coming down from the parent's face. One tear is a tear of joy, of gratitude, of thankfulness to God. God, thank you for this milestone moment, my child starting second grade or fifth grade or high school or even going to college. Thank you for living to experience the growth and the progress of my child. But the other tier is a tier of prayer, heartfelt prayer. God, bless my child that they should have a good year, a happy year, productive year, fulfilling year, that they encounter good friends and good teachers, that each year be a year of growth and fulfilling their potential. And when I think about God, looking at each and every one of us, starting the new year with Elul, with the chauffeur, with the high holidays, God is also praying. And just like when the parents pray, they don't have a prayer book in their hand. It's just a prayer from the heart. God is praying for all of us to have a fulfilling, purposeful, meaningful, successful year ahead. Because like parents love their children, God loves us and never stops getting nachas from us as we show more and more of our potential. It doesn't matter if you're five or 50, there's always more potential to reveal. They tell a story about a mother who takes her kid to the bus stop. He's going off to kindergarten for the first time and kid's never been to school and the mother is crying and she's kissing her child and saying, sweetheart, darling, Shefala, Zisinka, little pumpkin, my little baby, sweetheart, have a wonderful day. Mamanke, Shana Panim. Have a wonderful day in school. And the kid goes off and the mother's crying to see the kid go for the first time, tears of joy and prayer. And when the kid comes home, the mother's waiting at the bus and she embraces the little boy and she says to her son, my sweetheart, my darling, my Shane upon him, how was your first day in school? He says it was great. The mother says, what did you learn in school today? And the kid says, I learned that my name is actually David. When your kids go off to school, your greatest prayer is, 
that the teachers and the friends are kind to them. Show them the same love and sweetness and kindness that they receive at home. And so too, God prays for us that our year should be filled with blessings, with happiness, with health, that everyone we encounter should show us the same love and affection that God has for us. And we are all God's angels, God's messengers. Let us show one another, God's children, the love that God has for each and every one of us. I never forget when I was once in Publix, there was this couple in front of me and the woman whispered to her husband that this particular cashier, this particular man behind the register is always very kind to her. And when the man came up to pay the groceries, the groceries he slipped the cashier a few twenties. And the man said, what's that for? And he said, that's for always being kind to my wife. When I walked out of Publix, I turned to the man and I said, that was very impressive, really beautiful what you did. And he looked at me and he said, it's important to let people know that God loves them. When we show love to one another, we're communicating God's love for his children, just like the teacher who communicates the parent's love to the child when the child is in the care of the parent. Let us embark on the month of September, the month of Elul, which coincides simultaneously and make it a year, a, a year ahead filled with growth and happiness and health. All the best.